Hey everyone, Josh here from pmstudent.com. Today I'd like to point out something that uh, came up in my research for something that I'm using uh, for my own project team. Essentially, I started looking in again. This is something that I've uh, looked at before and, and done before on previous projects, but uh, essentially using, you know, how do you do your estimation to uh, reflect reality and and get the uncertainty and the risk accounted for as it should be, all those kinds of things. And so something that I've done in the past, what I've got up here is the GAO uh, Best Practices Guide for Cost Estimation um, and Budgeting and things like that. But, you know, so it's not exactly related, but I've used the same, some of the techniques here that are described in this document and also a NASA document. If you go to NASA and you go to their Program Analysis and Evaluation Office, there's the NASA cost estimating handbook as well and I've done some things in the past where uh, based on all the estimates and the amount of amount of uncertainty in each of the individual estimates uh, you know coming up with a cumulative way of getting to you know what is the confidence interval in our estimates how much uh, reserve do we need to add whether it's schedule or cost reserve uh, for for management of that so anyway, I, I started looking at three-point estimates. And this is something I've done three-point estimates in the past, and I've also done something a little bit different where I take kind of a, a probability distribution and apply that to the estimates. So I've done something where there was a, a routine type of a category and then like a, you know kind of a medium uncertainty category and then something that's just brand new that isn't anything like we've done before, and I had three buckets in there. So I came across this today, uh, a post from Glenn Alleman at herdingcats.typepad.com, and uh, why three-point estimates create false optimism. And I don't want to go through the entire thing. This is going to be a short video, but definitely read through this. Uh, it's very some very important points about how Glenn is uh, advising against three-point estimates from the engineers or whoever you're working with on your project team. And instead, he kind of have, and maybe I'm misunderstanding, but he's got this classification, something that I've done similar, where I've had three buckets, and those have translated into essentially a triangular distribution is what I used for calculating uh, how uncertain those are and what impacts they're going to have in terms of what we should budget for the project for cost and time. Now... You may be familiar that uh, Bill Duncan on, on pmstudent.com in the past, he did a series on, on estimation. And uh, the third part of that series is talking about three-point estimates. And so uh, on the surface, at least, it looks like these two guys, who I respect a lot, both of them, both Glenn and uh, Bill, that they disagree in some fundamental way on this. Uh, essentially, Bill is describing a process where you start with the likely estimate, and then you're asking about the um, you're asking about the least likely or the the pessimistic and the optimistic estimates afterwards. Um, I I do think too that Bill is is uh, known for saying that the people who are doing the work shouldn't be the ones doing the estimates. It should be other subject matter experts who have done this type of work before or whatever. But it shouldn't be the people who are doing the work. And maybe that's wrong, Bill. I'm sorry if it is, but I really just wanted to point out for new project managers, when you start thinking about these things, you will go out and find different opinions on this topic, and some of them are pretty nuanced. It's not really a black or white issue. In fact, um, you know, like Glenn is saying, do not, I repeat, do not ask for three point estimates of duration and cost. And this is something that I've done before in the past, and it seems to be something that Bill is, is looking to do as well. But like I said, I've also done something that was much more like this, where we had a classification of kind of uncertainty on the estimates and used that as well. So anyway, I'll put a, a link to all these things in the post below. But I'd like to get your take on this. Um, if you're someone who's been through these things before, you have a strong opinion on three-point estimation or some of the other estimation methods, what is your opinion? Share a comment, uh, share some links with us so that we can have a little bit of a discussion about this topic. Thanks everyone. Josh from pmstudent.com.